Hi, Ikumazi. Thanks for letting us come and talk to you today. Quickly, yes, here we are. I'm Lotta. I'm a designer at Nikon, and um, for the past year or so, I've been doing quite a lot of mobile projects, so doing native and React native projects. Uh, and I'm Philip. I'm a software developer at Nikon. Um, for most of my career, I've been doing web development, but in the last couple of years, I've transitioned more into mobile development, but along the way, also experimented with uh, things like React Native and React. Yeah, a couple of words about our company, Nikon, uh, founded in 2007, and we employ around, uh, let's say, 150 people. We just opened a, a new office in, in Stockholm in the in fall time. And we want the great place to work uh, implement this year. So nice company to work at. Not anything to complain. Uh, we do we do agile uh, development. So we build services for our clients. We do everything from design to to playing around with data. So we usually like to do all of these in one project. Do the Full, uh, full project from start to end. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, first we'll go through a bit about the ways of developing mobile apps, what are the different options you have, uh, then we have one example case that we will talk about, what we have learned in and uh, how it really have solved problem, problems that we have encountered there. Uh, yeah. So let's briefly talk about building mobile apps. Um, some time ago, when uh, smartphones became more common and basically everybody started getting them, uh, companies realized that they wanted to have uh, mobile apps and mobile versions of their existing products. But um, of course, at that time, there wasn't uh, many options. You either had to build a fully native app, which uh, wasn't that easy because it was still something brand new, or you can just uh, make a <coughs> mobile web page, a simple web page, and put it in a web view and call that a mobile app. Now, of course, we have a lot more options. You can uh, still use develop native apps. You can do native apps from React Native or Native Script. You can uh, use some of more recent uh, technologies such as hybrid apps with Cordova or progressive web apps. And um, <clears throat> now one of the challenges is that the users have become uh, very savvy. And uh, if you give somebody, for example, a web app, and uh, it just it feels often like it doesn't feel like a native app. If something is even slightly off, like it is slightly slower or the depth response is not quite there if the, some elements look different. It's uh, usually uh, that the users will complain. And what happened is that uh, many companies actually returned to developing fully native apps after some experimenting with uh, uh, different hybrid apps. But uh, let's focus on uh, native apps and native apps for using React Native. So if you look at some of the benefits, now of course native apps offer the most fluid and natural user experience. After all, like this is what they're built for. They also offer you full access to all mobile features such as uh, location tracking, motion tracking, uh, camera, microphone, things like that, because these are usually some of the areas that you run into trouble if you're using some sort of a hybrid solution. And of course, being that they're so mature that there's extraordinary support from the app community. And typically, if you have some questions, it usually takes a couple of minutes until you can find an answer in uh, places like Stack Overflow. Now, if you look at React Native, it <coughs> basically, React Native is, uh, it's a, it offers a fully native experience. After all, it renders native components. Uh, you just, because it doesn't uh, use any browser-based browser tech. Instead, you're just using React and JavaScript to uh, 
element bridge main of components. And of course, you can reuse some of your uh, development skills. And uh, standard UI elements can be reused uh, across platforms. So basically, it's normal just buttons, you can write one line of code and it's going to show on both iOS and Android. But if you look at some challenges, uh, native apps require full implementation on each platform. So basically, you will have to rewrite the code twice. Uh, React Native, on the other hand, requires both React and native coding experience. And all custom UI components require native programming. Now, there's a common misconception that if you use React Native, you can somehow bypass uh, native coding entirely and basically produce uh, twice as much with uh, less uh, developers. And, in shorter time, but that's simply not true. Because if you want to do something that even like uh, remotely differs from what React Native offers, like you have to actually build those components first natively in using Java or Objective C, and then you have to bridge them using React. Uh, so yeah, I'll have a say a word about our project that we are working. Uh, so yeah, me and Philip are in this uh, new project. We can't really tell too much about it, but uh, it's a big service renewal. So we are renewing all service. Uh, it's quite big. We have multiple platforms, so not just iOS and Android, but also web and other stuff too. Uh, we have quite a big team there. So we are four designers, and, uh, and we I think we have uh, at least one one or two developers per platform. So we are already almost 10 people and we all sit at the client. So we have our desks nicely there side by side and we, we work together just like IDM was uh, telling in the previous previous talk. So that's pretty much our way of working. We, we sit there and work together, designers and developers. And as we are doing a, a, a service renewal, we got some requirements for the new service from the old old service. Mm. So we have really high expectations for the design. Uh, it is expected to be modern, uh, work flawlessly across uh, different platforms. So we want to give the same experience for the users on iOS and Android and web and all the other platforms too. So we are trying to uh, aim for a seamless experience there. Uh, we also have a high emphasis on testing and uh, getting a good usability for the service because that has been a really big problem in the, in the past. So user testing is also highly in focus. Uh, performance has also <clears throat> been identified as a very important requirement and our app is quite hardware intensive because one of the it, it uses a lot of uh, animations as well as uh, video streaming and the current product has some uh, quality issues and the requirement is to implement automated testing in the new version of the product to mitigate those issues so the reasons why we chose to go with native is that, well, first of all, we had uh, available experienced native developers who worked on similar products using Swift and Java. And even though uh, there was uh, talk about using React Native, even our client has been suggesting that using it and just that uh, we didn't really have anybody who built anything even remotely close to that using React Native. So, and uh, there were many uh, reliable frameworks and libraries available for native code that we knew that we could utilize in fulfilling the design requirements. And at the time that uh, we were making these decisions, also we knew that React Native had uh, very limited support for some of the features that we needed to implement. And uh, since the since that time, some of that. Uh, Support has been added or improved, but still, it's 
nowhere near as good as the native. And uh, also, as for automated tasting, now there are tools that are available right in Android Studio and Xcode, as well as uh, third-party uh, tools that we can utilize. And as for React Native, again, like there was some, uh, it, it's still lacking quite a bit in this department. So yeah, however, even though it might seem that going native solves all of our problems, we have still uh, identified some obstacles when doing native work. So one of them is platform-specific design, because we are doing uh, designs for, or we are doing the service for multiple platforms. We usually should be making one design for iOS, one design for Android. And that is always quite a lot of work for the for the design team, and that's a huge uh, challenge on keeping everything in sync and having all the features uh, work the same. And um, on the development side, basically, oftentimes that one of the problems is uh, lots of throwaway code. Basically, you design something, you program it. And iOS and Android, then you realize that, well, it could be done better some other way. So designers go back to the drawing board, they design something different, and then present to us that, well, you actually need to do it differently. So basically, we have to just uh, throw away everything that we did and start from scratch. And also that there is limited cross platform synergy. Uh, Android and iOS are still, they're quite different. And even uh, design patterns are quite different on both. So even if we successfully manage to implement something on one platform, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can just easily do it on the other platform. So here's some of our solutions to tackle these problems. On the design side, we have decided to ditch the traditional iOS Android separation, and we're doing device-based design. So we are making one design for, for mobile, one design for web. And uh, this way we are uh, designing to not have anything platform uh, specific, but uh, keeping in mind that uh, we must have this uh, common flow in all of these applications. Of course, we don't want to upset any iOS or Android users by uh, providing them with uh, path, uh, with patterns that they are not used to. So, of course, we will have these small adjustments made, but the, the core design, uh, the initial design is only made for, for iOS at this point. And then Android is, is following that design. Um, so, in previous projects that I worked on, it's usually been a goal that uh, iOS and Android are advancing at the same pace. So basically, you try to keep everything as in sync as possible. Now, with this uh, particular uh, product, what we have actually done is that we started iOS first. And iOS development of the iOS app started about six weeks before the Android. This was uh, purely out of uh, scheduling, uh, or scheduling reasons, basically, our Android developers would be, become available about six weeks later. But what we have uh, noticed is that this actually worked out really well for our product because essentially when we're doing the development iterations, we're first testing everything on iOS. So designers would design something and we would implement and see how, basically how it works on the app. Then we would uh, in some cases go to real users and ask them to play around with it so then we will discuss and reevaluate and redesign. And but basically, by the time that uh, we more or less finalize uh, the design, the Android hasn't even started implementing that feature. So when they start actually doing it, like it's already final. So they don't. There's much less iteration on another platform because all those cycles have been done on iOS first. So in in this sense, it's almost like. Uh, you know, we don't have to constantly rewrite to code bases. We 
instead of we focus on one and then try to implement on the other. But of course, it doesn't mean that uh, everything is final. So if we uh, decide that, that on iOS, the performance of some animation just doesn't not as smooth, so we can redesign it later. And um, another kind of, for me personally, quite eye-opening experience has been uh, the design to fail principle. Well, again, what's new for this particular uh, project is that designers and developers are pretty much working every day together. Like we're constantly communicating, we're sitting uh, side by side, so we have like developer, designer, designer, developer, developer. And uh, oftentimes, like, it's basically it helped me to understand better like the job of the developer select, kind of like they're not uh, doing, designing all these things to annoy us and to make it like, as complicated as possible, but actually the goal is always to provide the best user experience. And uh, in terms of designing to fail, well, sometimes like the designs, like they look so ambitious and you're thinking like, well, it's, it's so hard to pull off it. Even if we can code it, it's just, it's, maybe it's not gonna work in the best possible way, not in the smoothest possible way, because obviously like many uh, developers often prefer to use just like the simplest possible solution. But through uh, talking about it with one of the developers, basically uh, what he told me is that, well, let's just do it this way. If it fails, it fails. Like we, that will be a benchmark. And then we'll go from there and iterate to see how we can make it better. And uh, for me personally, like this was uh, a very, like it's a big relief so that you, you know that it, no matter what I see, like whatever the, the designers come up with, it doesn't mean like that it's, it's, that's, that's uh, set in stone. And well, so far it's, uh, proving quite successful because I think that actually even like the most ambitious ideas so far we have been able to implement them and a lot of it is has to do just basically it's because you don't feel that uh, pressure you know that designers and developers are working side by side and we're basically on the same team and we're constantly communicating um, so but to conclude, uh, so the decision to what, what technology should be used as a native, as a React native, or something else, it really depends on the kind of product that you're building and the available resources. Uh, oftentimes what I find a little bit maybe frustrating is sometimes the client will come to us and say, well, we want you to use React native to build something. Well, we're thinking like, well, what, what do you want us to build? Like, you cannot make this decision before like, you even know what the final product is. Uh, and in our case, uh, it was everything pointing towards uh, using native. But at the same time, like, no single solution is superior to another. No solution is inferior to another. It really, at the end of the day, depends on what, what you have to work with and what you're trying to accomplish. But uh, what we have learned is that basically by, by being agile, it's possible to optimize the development in certain ways. And so far, like, even though we're building uh, several different platforms, we have iOS, we have Android, we have web, uh, we actually have been going ahead of schedule and we have below budget. So, but basically because we have been kind of being creative with some of the methods used in development. So, yeah, thanks a lot.